Hello you. In a previous video we talked about the explainable AI cheat sheet. Today we'll be talking about one of the methods that belong to this circle here, neural representations. We'll be talking about a method called dataset examples. And this method sets us up to talk about three of these. So I was going to talk about one of them, but then in writing that video came across to me that dataset examples is a better starting point. So let's get into that. So these are to you know recap the explainable AI cheat sheet it categorizes about six categories of um, machine learning explainability or interpretability methods. Um, and the one here on the left for inspecting how model works and their internals, the neural representations is, is one of them that will, um, the, the method that we're talking about today falls under this category. So the best way to talk about dataset examples is to think about vision models, uh, computer vision models that classify images, so to speak. But it, it works on, on multiple other types of models as well. So think about a model that takes an image and then uh, puts a classification. And this example model here, here, for example, only can classify something as a cat or a dog or as, or as other. You can uh, tend to split uh, computer vision classifiers into two major components. So it will have a, a lot of layers, and the last layer would be sort of the, the last chunk, uh, would, would tend to be the a classification component. Um, and the majority of, of the model would tend to be what we can call feature extraction um, that tries to make sense of, of the image data more and more. And its output is used by the classification component to um, output let these probabilities or scores or expectations for um, what the image is. Now, the, the final output the, the, that we're used to looking at is these percentages uh, that all add up um, to one, so or to 100%, so to speak. Um, so this is what's called a, a, a soft max um, classification. But then before we apply this mathematical uh, formula, this soft max, the model actually outputs a score. Uh, the model has, let's say, three neurons, because this model knows only three classes or classifies things as, as one of three classes. So it has three output neurons. And each one of these neurons from the, the entire calculation of the model would have a value. And this value can be a positive number or a negative number. So let's use an example here. I didn't make these calculations. There's just a toy uh, example. So the first neuron here would be associated with cats. Uh, that's how the model was trained, and the score here would be, let's say, 35. And then the second neuron is uh, associated with dogs, and the score here would be much lower, so two. And other, so to speak, would be, let's say, minus four. So with, with, with data set examples, what we want to do is we want to get the trained model and run it on a large number of, of examples that we have in our, in our training set and hold on to the activation values. So how we do that is that we take the first image, we pass it through the network, we get the values of these neurons. So we don't really care about the output uh, in, in this uh, scenario. We just want the values of the neurons. And we note them aside in, let's say, a tape, where each column would be a uh, example from our data set, and each row would be um, the values of, of, of the neurons. So we slide to our next uh, image. And then here, for example, we see that the dog neuron um, is activated at a higher value of 50. Um, and then we record that to calculate. And then we run this on a large data set, maybe thousands of examples. And then we would end up with this sort of table that has a row for each neuron and a, a column for each example in our data set. Then we can do interesting things that really tell us about the model. So the most value that we sort of get from data set example from data set example is that if we're focused on a specific neuron, let's say the cat's neuron, we can order the columns um, so to have 
the columns or images that have the highest value uh, to the left. So we have them in like descending order. And in that case, if we pick the first, let's say, you know, 10 or 50 uh, examples with the highest activation values for this neuron, that gives you a sense of um, what this neuron is sort of sensitive to from, 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 from the data set and the data that it was it looked at. We looked at a toy example of the three output neurons, but the classification component is actually composed of thousands, if not millions, of neurons. And so we can do the same thing. When we're collecting the data set examples, we can collect them for each of the neurons, not just the, the three output uh, neurons. But then let's not forget about the first sort of component, which is where the majority of, of the model's um, computational and representational capacity really is. Uh, that component is also filled with millions, if not hundreds of millions, also in some of these models um, of neurons. And so we can record their values as well, and we can examine them the more we want to sort of dig deep and maybe debug the models uh, or, or debug the layers if uh, we want to examine a specific model or find out why it's made a, a certain mistake. Let's say. And so this table of activations, uh, where again, the columns are, are the inputs and the rows are the neurons, we can call this the activation matrix, so to speak. And a lot of the methods in that area of the cheat sheet rely and use this. So we'll see that SVCCA is really a tool to um, work with, with this um, matrix or with this table. Um, things like model distillation heavily use a table like this. Um, and things like we'll, we'll see with activation maximization and um, feature visualization as well. So this extends to NLP and to text just as it does to images. So each column can be a token or a, a, a word, uh, so to speak. Or if we're working with um, documents and you know, tweets and sentences, and document embeddings, each column can be an image. And that's a way to, to examine uh, the uh, activation matrix. To illustrate a live example of dataset examples and how they're used in machine learning model interpretability, one of the best examples out there is the OpenAI microscope. And you can just Google OpenAI microscope, you'll, you'll get to this page, and then here you'll find a number of different models. So we can collect click on one of them. So these are computer vision models. And then here you have two maps of, uh, of, of the model. So the input would be towards the bottom here. So this is a small mini map and this is a, a large map. So the input would go in here and then these are the, the layers and they have the names. So 3A, 3B, 4, 4A, 4B. And then the output would tend to be uh, towards it. So let's say we're examining the um, neurons in this layer. Let's say this one of the final layers in the model. The examples that you have here, um, the, the visualization shows you units. So units are neurons. And it's showing you images that are created using feature visualization, which um, I will refer you to other videos. I'll, I'm hoping to do something on them in, in the future, but uh, Yanis has a great video on it. Um, there are a couple links in, in the description. If you want to learn about feature visualization now, uh, there's also a, a great blog post at the still about that. Uh, but for now, you need to know that we clicked a layer. So this is the map of the model. It moved here and we clicked on the layer, on you know the last layer, and it showed us a grid of, of units. So this one has 1,024, uh, these are channels or units, um, let's call them neurons. So we can click on one of them. And then this is a sort of explanation um, tool. Um, and here you have the dataset examples. So the idea here is that neuron number zero in this layer is activated the highest with these images. So it's tends to favor um, these bright colors, for example. You can click on another unit and see this one that um, is activated by suits, let's say 
classic cars at the same time. Um, you can look at another unit. This one lights up in response to this kind of to pandas and this kind of, of, of ship. You can go unit by unit um, and learn about each sort of neuron in this um, in this model. And then you can also go towards the beginning um, and look at other other layers. So this is a massive work. This is a master work of um, interactive visualizations that explore models. So we can go very early in the model. And the earlier layers tend to really focus on edges. Um, they have not built, the model has not really built the representations of complete objects. Um, way out way here in the so at these earlier layers would tend to focus on um or activate to edges uh simple shapes um so let's look at some of the data set examples um so you can see patterns uh things like this pattern of of sand dunes general shapes so we can Continue to click and see, you know, visual language that sort of brings a lot of these images together. So this is you know, black and white shapes, um, maybe with letters inside of them, circles of, of black and white. And we can go on one by one and explore all of these. And this would give you an indication of, and then you can go two layers inside and you can see that the shapes or the textures or the types of images that activate each unit tend, would tend to be a little bit more um, advanced, I guess, or, or sophisticated. It's very easy to see that these are not, not random. There is a unifying theme that tends to activate each of these neurons. So this is the OpenAI microscope. It's very interesting. You can spend a lot of time going through these models, the various layers and neurons. Um, these are the latest sort of multimodal uh, models that were trained on both images and text. So some of these dataset examples would have sentences um, that activate a neuron as well as dataset images. So you can spend a lot of time looking at these uh, examples. It's, it's absolutely fascinating. Um, so it loads up here and then we'll see the, wherever there's a text examples, it would show at the bottom that I'm having maybe. So this is our video on data set examples. It fits, um, under neural representations and in future videos, we'll see where this understanding and the concepts that we sort of laid out here, um, can lead us next to other explainability methods. Hope you've enjoyed it. See you in the next video.